Um, good afternoon, dear colleagues. Uh, thank you for still being here on the last day. Uh, my name is Dinar Gagarina, and today I will present the project RUVART, or Russian Ukrainian War Art Data Collection and Analysis. It's an ongoing project, and I will be sharing with you its preliminary and initial results. I submitted this paper to the conference as an independent researcher, so in program and everywhere I'm mentioned as an independent researcher. But since this year, I am affiliated with two universities, Friedrich Alexander University in Germany and American University of Central Asia in Kyrgyzstan. Uh, additionally, I'm co-founder of the DH Cloud community. Art has always been a powerful and motivating force, especially during times of war. Throughout history, we have witnessed examples of art serving as a response to conflict and tragedies. From Picasso's Guernica to the iconic, um, to the iconic uh, Vietnam Napalm photograph and Goya's The Sword of May, uh, 1808. Art has captured the experiences and emotions of war and became an integral part of public discourse. In um, RUVART project, I focus on the art motivated, uh, sorry, uh, art motivated by the full scale Russian invasion of Ukraine. This ongoing conflict. Uh, has not only resulted on in human deaths, migration, humanitarian and economic crisis, uh, but has also stimulated a wave of artistic expression across uh, across various mediums, fields, genres, and so on. From music, poetry, films, literature, to street art, fine arts, uh, internet memes and different forms of graphics, illustrations, and so on. Artists from various uh, cultures, countries, and with various languages have used their creativity to address the violence and draw attention to the situation. Uh, they bridge the past and the present and in some kind of future because future historians will use these pieces of art as historical sources to understand and investigate our times. Additionally, art is a kind of universal language of communication and can spread the message via cultural, geographical, temporal, and other borders. And we understand that this message, sometimes humanistic and sometimes propagandistic. Uh, Robert Girl is developing of data representation model for Russian-Ukrainian war art objects, along with collecting and analyzing these objects with historical and cultural perspective. I'm from historical background, and historical part of the project is the most interesting for me. And I understand this part <laughs> the most. <laughs> and I'm only one in this project, so uh, I will be thankful for your advices and comments. Uh, by systematically gathering and investigating these artistic topic objects, we aim to gain a deeper understanding of the war's impact of, on art and culture, as well as the usage of historical references in public discourse, including art discourse. Um, at this stage, my work has focused on visual art, uh, which includes professional and amateur images motivated by the Russian, uh, Russian invasion of Ukraine uh, through web scraping and also manual search and upload, manual uploading. I have collected approximately 1,000 images uh, uh, with plans to expand further. The collection is stored in a relational database and, images, and image attribution is currently in progress. Uh, I'm also working, it's also work in progress on linking images with relevant places, artists, uh, political and cultural figures, and publications about uh, this uh, art. Um, this diagram illustrates a simplified model of the collection where visual sources are just part of it. 
Uh, the collection also will, inclu will include music, poetry, songs, and video. Uh, I can say that it's, it already uh, has some examples of such kinds of art, but nevertheless, this part uh, is for next steps. All kinds of sources are linked with artists, persons, events, and external sources where they are published or mentioned. Uh, next diagram uh, provides a more detailed fragment of the collection model related to visual sources. We not only save the connection with external source where, uh, where the image was found, but also the context. And it's very important, the context where image uh, appearance, uh, which we believe is important for further analysis and uh, analysis of the discourse. Uh, so we also collect, I also collect, uh, text fragments uh, going with the image. Uh, there are some examples uh, before, before the data cleaning process. Of course, we see uh, a lot of duplications here. Uh, I especially choose these duplications. Uh, sorry. <laughs> and um, Second problem is that there are images, of course, there are uh, from one side are relevant to our topic, but not relevant to our collection. For example, the collection includes includes photograph of this, this, Russian, this Russian man who was arrested for an anti-war drawing by, by his, his daughter. Uh, she's 11 or 13 years old. Uh, cleaning the data is here not non-trivial because it's an image. If the image, uh, if an image is duplicated several times, we need to keep only one image, but retain uh, all the context uh, and sources of its mention. Um, these are fragments of website with image representation, which is not yet open because attribution is not completed and intellectual property issues have not been resolved. Um, the research and analytical part involves asking questions and specific tasks. We, are, we seek to identify key elements and objects within the image, recognize political and cultural figures on it, identify historical references. Uh, we also aim to provide a kind of mapping, not only for visualization purposes, but also for spatial analysis and next step. Additionally, we save the inscription on images in the database and plan to analyze them also. Uh, the scope of the project includes both attribution and further analysis of image metadata, as well as the use, uh, use of computer vision tools to analyze and cluster the collection. For clustering objects, for clustering object, uh, objects, we use uh, Clip neural network by, by OpenAI, uh, which is trained on a wide variety of images and work, works well, well enough uh, with our collection. On this uh, slide, you also can see other uh, solutions and tools that I use. And uh, here is the result of automatic clustering by Clip neural network. We can see here, um, okay, I'm not sure that you can see, uh, but believe me, <laughs> I can see clustering images for, for example, with flags, presidents, uh, and pictures that cornered Putin. Uh, and um, children uh, drawings and some other clusters. If we have a little more time, uh, I would like to show you some examples of interesting graphics and street art motivated by the, uh, good, but the uh, Russian, inv uh, Russian invasion of Ukraine. Uh, some notable themes include, for example, figures of children, uh, usually the are girls, uh, you can see it here. There are pictures from different places all over the world for example, my, one of my lovelists is from Paris. Uh, girl with flag on the top, in the middle. Uh, 
This one uh, is Banksy street art, which was made in Ukraine, not far from Kyiv. And it's uh, also rather typical. It's uh, Putin and a boy who win, <laughs> wins uh, Putin. Uh, additionally, we have a lot of birds. Uh, and not just because of uh, doves, but various types of birds on different surfaces, including uh, tongues. It's here. It's bird on hang. Not very good quality of this image, sorry. Uh, and usually uh, these birds are in blue and yellow colors, not white, as in Picasso uh, dove. We also see drawings on cats of cats, because everybody loves cats, and they like that one. It's also blue and yellow cat, uh, or cat with flags, and so on. And I don't have it on this slide, but uh, we also have pictures with bears, because bear is a typical symbol of Russia. Next slide, um, presidents. Uh, and uh, of course, most often there are Putin and Zelensky. I have here only two main images of Zelensky because uh, Putin is represented in more uh, variety <laughs> variants. And uh, there are also pictures from Russia and uh, from Ukraine and other territories. Uh, sometimes also drawings of Trump, usually hugging with Putin, and also China's leaders and other leaders. Uh, what I find more inter uh, most interesting uh, are the historical symbols and references. Here, as expected, we meet references to fascism, and there are a huge amount of Putin images who looks like Hitler. Uh, it's not so difficult to do it, because they're really similar, even in faces. Uh, many portraits uh, and collages of Putin, Stalin, and Hitler. There are a lot of uh, uh, such kind of collages. Uh, here in the top right corner is an interesting example of how like traditional monuments, and here is a monument for the liberation of Bulgaria during World War II, and it, wa it was re painted uh, in the colors of the Ukrainian flag. So it's, uh, there are a lot of references to World War II, and it's one of the examples. Um, finally, it's my last slide. Um, some images indicate current war episodes. Uh, for example, ships have become a significant motif in art. Um, this ships, this ship is uh, refers, uh, refers to the first day of the full-scale invasion uh, and fire of a Russian warship. Uh, it's uh, <laughs> it's one of the most often <laughs> images of this war. Uh, thank you for your attention and. <laughs>